undone. We all expect a gentle answer, Jew. I have possessed your grace upon thy purpose, and by our holy Sabbath have I sworn to have the due and forfeit of my body if you deny it. Let the danger light upon your charge. Are you? This is no answer, thou art feeling man, to excuse the current of thy cruelty. I am not bound to please thee with my answers. Do all men kill the things they do not love? Praise any man the thing he would not kill. Every event is not a hate at first. What, wouldst thou have a serpent sting thee twice? I pray you, think you question with the Jew. You might as well use question with the wolf, while he hath made the ewe bleed for the lamb. You might as well do anything most hard, as seek to soften that. Then which what's harder? His Jewish heart. Therefore I do beseech you. Make no further offers. Use no farther means. But in all plain and brief convenience, let me have my judgment and the Jew his will. Thy three thousand ducats, here is six. We're in six parts. Every part of ducat, I would not draw them. I would have my thought. How shalt thou hope for mercy, rendering none? What judgment shall I dread, doing no harm? You have among you many a purchased snake, which, like your asses and your dogs and mules, you, uh, you use an abject and in slavish parts, because you bought them. Shall I say to you, let them go free, marry them to your heirs? Why sweat they under burden? Let their beds be soft like yours, and their, their paddles seasoned with such beams. You would answer, their slaves are ours. So do I answer you. The pound of flesh which I demanded of the king was dear to It is mine. I will do that. If you deny me, then fire upon your law. There is no force in the decrees of the fairness. I stand for judgment. Answer, shall I have it? Can not better be employed, Bassanio, than to look still and write mine epitaph. Why dost thou wed thy mind so earnestly? To cut the forfeit of that bankrupt there. I stand here for the law. The court shall hear Valerio's letter. Your grace shall understand that at the receipt of your letter, I am very sick. But in the instant that your messenger came, and loving visitation was with me a young doctor of Rome. His name is Balthazar. I acquainted him with the cause of controversy between the Jew and Antonio the Merchant. He is furnished with my opinion, which, better with his own learning, the greatness whereof I cannot enough commend, to fill up your grace's request in my stead. Come, judge. I pray, let me open the bond. Here it is, most reverend doctor, here it is. So by this bond he is forfeit, and lawfully by this the Jew may claim a pound of flesh to be by him cut off nearest the merchant's heart. Be merciful, is thine. The court awards it, and the law doth give it. Most rightful judge. And you must cut this flesh from all his breast. The law allows it, and the court awards it. Come, prepare.
pay them off in price, and let the Christian come. Here is the money. So, the Jew shall have all justice. So, release. He shall have nothing but the penalty. Learn to judge. Oh, upright judge! Therefore, prepare thee to cut off the flesh. Shed the blood. Nor cut thou less, no more, but just a pound of flesh. If thou cuts more, or less, but just a pound, be it so much as makes it light or heavy in the substance, or the division of the twentieth part of one poor scruple. Nay, if the scale do turn, but in the estimation of a hair, thou diest, and all thy goods are compensated. A second Daniel. A Daniel, Jew. Now, that I have you on it. Why did you pause? Take thy forfeiture. Give me my principal, and let me go. I have it ready for thee. Here it is. He hath refused it in the open court. Or shall I not have barely my principal? Thou shalt have nothing but the forfeiture to be so taken at thy peril, Jew. Why, then the devil give him good of it. I'll stay no longer question. Terry, Jew, is enacted in the laws of menace. If it be proven against an alien, that by direct or indirect, the life of any citizen, the party against which he doth contrive shall seize one half his goods. The other half comes to the privy coffer of the state, and the offender's life lies in the mercy of the duke only against all other boys. In which predicament I say, thou stands. <laughs> For it appears by a manifest proceeding that indirectly and directly to thou hast contrived against the very life. Of the defendant, and thou hast incurred the danger formerly by me for mercy. Down therefore and beg mercy of the Duke. That thou shalt see the difference of our spirits, I pardon thee thy life before thy asking. For half thy fortune is Antonio's, the other half comes to the general state, which humbleness may drive into a fine. I state, not for Antonio. Nay, take my life at all. Pardon me not. Take my house. When you do take the prop that will sustain my house, take my life. When you do take the means where I live. What mercy can you render him? <coughs> Please, my lord, the duke and all the court, to quit the fine for one of his, of his goods, I am content. So he will let me have the other half in use to render it upon his death unto the gentleman that lately stole his daughter. Two things provided more that for this favor he presently become a Christian. The other that he do record again here in the court of all he dies possess unto his son Lorenzo and his daughter. He shall do it, or else I do recant the pardon that late I pronounced here. But thou contented you. Just thou say.